Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar, Small and Prefab Architecture Sharing Session. As part of the Prefab Glamping Villa Architecture Competition in Lombok 2020, organized by BPA Institute. My name is Francisca and I'll be your moderator today. I'm very excited to be hosting this session. As an introduction, BPA Institute is a new startup of architecture education and this is our first webinar. In the future, we will arrange more academic events like this. First of all, I would like to read out our webinar rules. Participants should mute the microphone during the online seminar. It is expected to turn off the video except when the host or moderator asks to turn on the video. It is expected to take part in this online webinar from start to finish to get e-certificate. Prepare your questions for the Q&A session the committee will select three participants to get the door prize. For the Zoom and YouTube participants, if you have any questions during the presentation, feel, please feel free to ask the questions in chat and we will discuss it at the end of the presentation. Now, without any further ado, I would like to kick things off by welcoming our three speakers, Mr. Riri Jacob, Mr. Takeru Soji, and Mr. Budi Pradono. These three great architects are also the three main jury for the prefab glamping competition. For the first presentation, we will turn the time over to Mr. Riri. Time is yours. Mr. Riri. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Riri. Today, I'm going to present my work uh, in English. Right, Mas Budi? <laughs> Yeah, since my English is not too uh, good, I wrote the presentation first in Bahasa, so I got translated by my designer staff last night. So please excuse me if I sound a little weird. Okay, shall we? Oops. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. This is my idea for prefab modular system uh, in house design. It was only a concept. Uh, it was published on Idea Magazine in 2011. Yeah. Around 10 years ago in Indonesia, prefab construction was still considered quite expensive with, compared to conventional construction like this. One of the reasons is because the labor cost in, is way cheaper back then. So this is my house. Uh, actually, for the floor, we were using composite ceramic modules, while the wall was using plaster wall panels. We call it uh, gypsum panels in Indonesia. And then this is, uh, I call it a uh, rumah nero or nero house. It was built using an exterior fiber cement wall. It was also a hybrid structure. This one, another experiment of uh, using a container, use container. Also this project, we call it Japan House. It's an exploration of renovation house that we superimpose with a Cremona steel structure as a plate 
and the second floor for the walls. This project also that I collaborated with uh, Ren Kapili. We try to using steel structure modules with a custom concrete sandwich panel floor. Okay. Here yeah, cabin is one of the project that I designed in 2016. It start when one of my relatives mentioned to me that they want to develop their private land in Lombok. Later it turned into the semi-permanent prefab building that we call it Kia Cabin now. So uh, that's the place in the left corner. This one is the picture from one of the nicest beach in Lombok. This is how we call it Gili. Gili is like a little island around Lombok Island. And this is a traditional spicy food from Lombok. That's really tempting, right? <laughs> Okay, this time I wanted to adjust the context toward the building that uh, have different qualities of function and surrounding environment. Lombok itself, I think have a surrounding character that leans toward vernacularity. It was more traditional, unlike Bali, which I feel is too dense and modernist. For me, it's not about representing the context, by replicating the shape of the traditional house of Sasak tribe, like most of the villa over there. But I was interested in their local method and construction technique and implement into a more modern building. So this uh, wood beam joint that we reference from typical Baruga building in Lombok. To improve the local thick wood, which consider moisture than the one in Java, I asked the help of local woodworkers there to preserve the wood by burning it in, like more vernacular building, like in Europe or Japan, like this. Maybe Takeru more familiar with this method. All the woods was sourced from surrounding neighborhood garden that they personal, personally collected as their local construction supply. We bought from them to build Kia cabin and also to share some fortune for the local citizen. So no woods were sourced from other outside the local side. So this is the process. Kia yeah, cabin is an affordable bungalow for mostly foreigner traveler that want to visit Lombok after their holiday from Bali. Usually that was the route they took. The site is located by the beach facing toward the north of the bay and in front of it. You can see straight to an island called Gili Nangu, Gili Kedis, and the other. By the way, Lombok Gili means an island. The size of the site only 400 meters square. Responding from the character of local residence housing, we divided the messing compound into three bungalows cabin and one restaurant cabin while in the middle we create a pool as a cell facility. Each cabin size are different from one another. 
we wanted to create a unique spatial and visual experience for each space. This is the first cabin with an attic concept. The area is following the piece of modules here. Inside the cabin, we have two beds with mini kitchen and uh, sofa there. That concludes the interior area for only 16 meters square. This one is cabin with a rooftop. There's only a queen size bed with a different layout configuration. This cabin has it on some bedding area in the second floor. The rooftop for more privacy. And uh, some bed area. This one is a cabin with steel house concept, or we call it rumah manggung. The cabin is designed in a raised platform to allow visual access from the inside. This cabin also have a different space configuration from the other. Okay. The last cabin we, is dedicated from the restaurant area, the communal area for other that it also function as kitchen, storage room, staff room. This cabin is located next to the road and more open towards the pool and the sea. This, I think, is the best spot from this restaurant to framing the beauty of Lombok Beach. This one photo. Okay. I'm sorry. I forgot I have a video in my presentation. Okay, this one is another cabin project that we're currently working on right now in a different site. It's also in Lombok. 
Okay, the preferred journey continue in the first Jintaro Design District in 2018. We wanted to use this chance to continue our mission and do exploring about prefabricated building. This time we collaborated with uh, our structural engineer to create design system, structure as well as uh, method and cost to get a better composition of private building solution in Indonesia. It was in 2018. We think private has become more feasible as a solution to modern architecture today. In our installation here, we try to create a simulation of material models with a sandwich panel method. The model then being translated into a spatial form following the size of the private material model of 24 by 24 centimeter. And then the year after, which exactly last year, at BDD in 2009, we tried to collaborate with several fabricated material product to be a part of our next steps research. We hope by including them into our research, we can test the quality of those products to be implemented in our construction design method system. With them, our exploration expand to several building topologies, which typology represent a different material identities. This is the first one. We name it resort. Resort took model with size 16 centimeters as a dynamic configuration in a form of two stories in the ground level was a bathroom with the second level was the bedroom. The second part, we call it uh, retail. This one is designed to be more attractive with spatial and materially. It is a redefinition of a pop-up store using a semi-transparent material with a lighting plate to invite people. This small unit is only using one room models. Uh, last but not least is the residence, we call it, which is the seat of prefab projects that we're currently developing now. Uh, you may know it as a RC web that I call. Here we use two models that show a house living situation with a compact living approach. Here are some pictures from the exhibition last year. This school event actually was initiated by Mas Budi Pradono and Mas Aang also with Mas Dani Caksono. Here we can see Mas Budi at the left corner photo. Also, uh, Almarhum Ahmad Juara came to our installation. Marina Tabasum and other friends around Bintaro district. And here are some bonus image from our newly completed RCFAP project in, past, in the past months. This is the first project that we have finished. And this is the second one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Riri, for the great and enlightening presentation. As a reminder to all participants, you can ask your questions in chat now. Without any further ado, we are going to the next presentation by Mr. Takeru.
Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. So, can I start? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. I will present it. Uh, present uh, one project uh, to show how we can use uh, local material and existing as one big possibility. So I will share the file. I will present Hara House, house in Nakanoshima. This is a site. Her house is located in the agricultural village of Tsurugasone in Japan. Uh, this site, uh, each household has a big estate and uh, one estate has uh, many buildings a single estate contains an assemblage of buildings and farmland that are interdependent on each other. So this village is facing the same problems that many of Japan's villages are facing a rural decline. Eventually, uh, the client will inherit this large family estate, which similarly already has many build structure upon it, such as the main family house, a work shed, garage, and also vinyl house. Thus, in this setting, our design direction was to create a building that uh, revitalize the structure already present on site and have the potential to adapt to new function as the need. We started our design from conceptualizing a small building as an incomplete remote extension of the main house the building is not fully self-sufficient and thus draws from its setting and relies on the surrounding buildings to fully function and even engage the village to create a thriving community. This is the plan, first floor plan. This is second floor plan. This is the elevation. This is section. This is detail section. So also we try to use uh, local construction system. This building emulates its surrounding, which has many vinyl house, like this picture and worksheet and all these old architecture buildings are using a small, tiny beam, also column. We also try to use only 120 millimeter square timber member. All of material for structure is 
this side, this small size, 120 millimeter square. And we try to create a simple truss, a frame truss. So in this side, we cannot get easily a big beam, also big crown. In this side, uh, we can get cheaply and easily this size, this uh, structure, this small structure and very cheap. Also, uh, this small material, even kids can carry easily, even women can carry easily. It's a very good point to influence uh, how to use this local material. This easily carry is very important thing. This is a frame. All of this beam, crown, are made uh, this 120 millimeter square timber. This is a detail of joint. We used uh, this steel plate to joint small wooden frame. This is detailed drawing. This is the detail of joint. And this site has a big snow pool. We have to simulate how the snow uh, will fall down, how uh, the snow behavior. So it's very important thing. It's also simulation by American powder. This is a view from living room. Very simple view. Just a frame. This is master bedroom. Thus, her house as a simple series of truss frame. I'm to connect all these entities by being part of the collective home of the village. It reinforces old and creates new connection with its surrounding buildings and community. Her house, this house is a proposal of a small, small house that shows a new management system of a village, agricultural village, a way to uh, revitalize a village that were formerly a collection of strong interconnections by using a local material and existing.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Dakaril, for sharing and inspiring us. And again, as a reminder to all participants, you can still ask your questions in chat. Now we can move on to our next presentation by Mr. Pradono. Mr. Pradono. Okay. Hello. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Can I share my presentation? Yes. Yeah, I think during the COVID-19 pandemic recently put a spotlight on prefabricated architecture. When the hospital of Wuhan was constructed only 10 days, this is a created discussion about designing small prefabricated houses to use as clamping unit for MotoGP even in Lombok. Uh, I will present three or maybe four prefab projects that are small in terms of scale, yet quite challenging due to the location. Hopefully this presentation can inspire everyone to join this. I know that everybody knows this uh, building. This is a farm road house in Illinois by Miss Van der Rohe. This is a small house which cover only 140 square meter compared to the 24 hectare of land. This is very brilliant structure and I think this is part of the prefabricated. But my critic is that uh, this is too independent to the nature. The second example is the uh, apartment building Habitat 67 by Mofse Safti. This is also uh, made of prefabricated concrete. This example also, I think, very separated with the nature. So my architecture is, is questioning the, the relationship with nature. So how we can design a prefabricated architecture from the nature itself. I believe that incorporating this natural material of the surrounding area into contemporary architecture is very important. So this is one of uh, our buildings, a house in Pintaro even separated, but I try strongly to mix with the nature. Even I bring the plants into the house, inside the house. So this is very small projects compared to others. <clears throat> when we compare to Farm Road House in Illinois, this is maybe similar in terms of scale, but this is tiny. The size is only nine times four meter or 36 square meter compared to the Ijen area, 2,500 hectares. So this place is 30 minutes from Bali. This is in Pranyuwangi. So the idea is actually how to mapping the several mountains surrounded. 
and making architecture for it. So after the mapping, then we can transform into architecture. My idea is stackable uh, bamboo slats, which is not assembled in factory, but in the village. So it's, uh, if every layer is made as a box, and then if we combine together, it is become a mountain. This is made independently by the people in Kintangan, in Desa, one of the villages in Banyuwangi. Then if we stack, then it's creating the mountain. the film. So this is the result. This is only tourist area. For bicycle competition in Panyuwangi. So prefabricated made by people. The material is from there. So part of the nature. The next project is a cabin unit in Atambua. Atambua is located near East Timor. I lived there for around four months. And the part of the terrain is a savanna. So palm trees are used to many different things. So it's very different with the Java area. So this the palm tree called lontar is a very interesting tree because people use for any kind of their lives. In the building material store also I can found the, the palm, the body, the leaf for their own architecture. So I, I was thinking to create new architecture with this kind of materials. So we can see surrounding that many people use it for the wall, for the roof, and even the fruits, people drink it. This one idea, when the infrastructure, they made infrastructure actually, they have a leftover concrete. Then I, I designed these small things into small living space for people who are working there. They just put that using the leaf of the palm trees of Lontar as partition. So only small thing is important.
The second thing is, uh, we call it a cabin. This is, uh, the size is 2.5 meter times 6 meter in size. Approximately is uh, like 15 square meter. So, I imagine that everyone in that region can make it themselves. So some part they make it window, some people can make this uh, structure. So the main structure is uh, the wood that they have. And we put uh, a kind of wheels in the way in order um, to avoid uh, permit from the government. So if we put the wheel, that's mean this is like temporary buildings. So people can make it this for Airbnb cabin. So this is very, very small, but it's separated with the toilet. It's only for sleeping and small pantry. So this, you can see the, the wall is made of, we call it pipak. Pipak is a traditional part of this palm tree of Lontar. And the other one use uh, local woods that we can use in, in different area in the mountain or on the beach. So this is the toilet unit, which is separated and also floating from, from the ground. With using the similar material. But we can use modern toilet. But we avoid water because water is very hard to get there. So this uh, another one is a very small one. We call it Atamwa tree house. But basically we got an idea this from Wolowan building in uh, Sulawesi area because they use this slate of wood as their wall. I imagine if they using the existing wood, we can create contemporary tree house. So this, the, the last one, I want to present, uh, we call it Nusa Wood Tour. It's a, a kind of effort, effort to, to create wood tower, wooden tower, but uh, use the local thinking of join. So we call it Nusa from Nusantara. So in the way we made, we made a research of uh, many building, many architecture, which has very rich in join. So this is the site in Drupan. how we, we make like eight floors of buildings. It's a house, housing. See, the idea is making interlocking honeycomb structural system. So consists of laminated wooden beam measure 30 centimeter times 30 centimeter and connected each other.
And if we combine every honeycomb, it's become new architecture. We define this combination, one unit, two units, three units, with elevator, corridors, So timber construction are used for centuries. However, intensive research and development brought new prospect of manufacturing timber, which provide architects and builders with opportunity to create the new ways of laminated timber. Yeah, absolutely in, in South Africa. So we made a model study to connect each of structure into big structure. In Europe is a kind of timber is also a renewable resource because like a, country like Austria or Eastern Europe, they can grow every single day. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Pradono, for sharing your design and experience with us. It looks like we have a few questions. And the first question comes from Edward to Mr. Takeru. It looks like the material is mostly from wood and it looks like it's a really open house. So how does it protect the user from snow since it snow heavily as you said before? Can I see, can I show the slide? Sure.
this slide shows uh, how uh, the snow, uh, what kind of behavior the snow. Uh, so, we made a small, small house and we covered a big shed, big hut by using a A-frame truss. So in winter, if we get a big snowfall, this housing like that, but life itself is still safe because of this big hut. This big hut, big white hut is made by, not wood, made by a uh, galvanized steel plate. So, and this big hut uh, is very useful uh, to save from snow, also strong sunlight in summer. So in winter, in summer, uh the life in this house is quite nice very comfortable is it enough as answer uh okay we also have um the second question is also for Mr. Takeru from Gasani Amalina. He said that it is a very interesting presentation about Hara House. The question is what the cover material in Hara House and how long the Hara House was built? Uh, two years. Two years old after construction. And material and... what? Uh, what the cover material in Hara House? Uh, carbonite steel plate. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Takeru. You and also have the third questions from Damayanto. Regarding the temporary structure in general, what kind of solution or ideas used to tackle the problems with water supply, waste, and rainwater? Maybe we can start with Mr. Takeru. Oh, excuse me. Which question? Regard regarding temporary structure in general, what kind of solution or ideas used to tackle the problem with water supply, waste, and rainwater? Uh, not about her house, about uh, this competition. Uh, Buddy, could you help me? Yeah, I think the question is if temporary building, uh, the solution of tackle the problem of water supply, water, waste, rainwater, I think it's depend on the location. Mm -hmm. like, like my project is uh, in Atambua, it's very hard to get to water. So that's why the toilet is separated with the building. And also there's a harvesting structure to get the water. Maybe Riri has uh, another answer. Yeah, I think I agree with um, Mas Budi because uh, in Indonesia we have a different context with the nature. So uh, regarding to the idea for the competition, I think that's uh, the solution that we need to 
get from the context of Lombok, especially in uh, the area of uh, Kuta Mandalika. I think the problem for water supply is similar with the other area in East Indonesia. So uh, we need to think about how to uh, produce and collect the rainwater for the uh, water, main water for the building. Okay, that's uh, the answer. <laughs> okay, thank you. We also have uh, the next questions from Farid Ramadan. This question is for all the speakers today. The question is, is there any standard or gu guideline to calibrate the prefabricated components of buildings, especially about the materials that we use for the prefab itself? For example, some people had speculation if prefab should be made by natural materials. So it looked like such a mandatory for a prefab building. I think the definition for the prefab fabricated uh, building is about the system. It's not about only the materials. It could be using uh, natural materials or uh, fabricated materials. Uh, we can use uh, every material with the other uh, solution. So we can use their modules for their materials. So uh, we can uh, get the construct construction for uh, make a building more efficient and more easy to build. I think I agree with uh, really, yeah, because uh, I think the system is very important in the way that uh, you uh, you can understand the place and very important to to use the local method because of the community empowerment. This is important for the projects, since it's uh, because uh, in. In 2001, when uh, when the MotoGP start, the hotel is not ready yet. So it's uh, so then the people can stay in in prefab. So it's very important to to maximize to using the system that the community can make it. So it's a uh, it's a uh, Community empowerment is, is, is very good, but the prefabricated is not only the materials, but also the system itself. So combination with the steel or with aluminum also possible. But the system is, because the system will make the construction fast, faster enough to reduce the cost. That's my answer. Thank you. And what about Mr. Takeru? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, everybody can use uh, any material in local, but important thing is uh, how to use and how to uh, you need, uh, you should uh, analyze the performance of this local material. Each material has uh, each performance. So also each, each material uh, should be used as a each prefab system. So anyway, we are not just designer, we are engineer. So just analyze the performance of new material, local material. 
Thank you. Thank you. And then there's also questions from Karisma Maulia. This question is for uh, Mr. Riri that also has answered in the chat. But the, I will read out the questions. Uh, for Mr. Riri, see your first project house using prefab. How many percent cost construction can be pushed down then use conventional building? And how long to build it, to build your first project use the prefab? Mr. Riri, is there any um, answers to add? Yeah, uh, I've already answered in the chat room. Uh, approximately around 20 until uh, 30%, uh, depending on the, how big the prefabricated constructed in, uh, uh, in that uh, using of uh, modules of the materials itself. Because the building is uh, more bigger uh, and also it uh, will be more uh, construct uh, and then the building is more lighter too. Uh, I think uh, charisma means uh, for the prefab building that I already built uh, around this month. This is the first prefab building that I constructed in only uh, 10 weeks. Okay, that's uh, the answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Riri. And the next question comes from Severus Andrew to Mr. Pradono. With the perforated wall design, how do you ensure such privacy at Atambua project? Yes, I think uh, Atambua is very hot. So, so the privacy is depend on the person who lives there. So basically in the afternoon or during the day, we don't need the, any privacy because we always outside to do many activities outside. So I think the important thing is maybe like uh, mosquito net and they can bring their own um, fabric maybe to cover. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And then also from Ismail Amar, this question is for uh, Mr. Riri, Mr. Pradono, and Mr. Takero. How about supplying sustainable electricity to every building? Maybe we can start from Mr. Pradono. Yes, I think it's uh, for the electricity. Is, uh, um, of course, we we have to depend on the government, but uh, the side is we can build close to the community area, which they have uh, their own electricity. But we are as a temporary building. We we don't need. Uh, a lot of electricity, yeah, actually, or during the night, you know. So uh, during the day, everybody is going out to do traveling, to, to watch the MotoGP, you know. No one stay in the villa. So it's a, uh, I think it's a very basic need. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, I think another solution is using the solar panels or another uh, sustainable resource power. Yeah, I think in Lombok is more uh, 
you can use the solar panel because uh, the sun is very hot around the day. Thank you, Mr. Riri. Uh, Mr. Takeru, is there you want to add? Uh, of course, you can use uh, any power generation system, but uh, important thing is uh, how sustainable for this site. So you can use wind, sunlight, uh, seawater power, biological so you can choose any way but important thing is just uh, which is the best the best uh, which is the best for this site thank you thank you we also have a uh, questions from youtube from cahya dinata uh, he asked about the kia cabins project how do you anticipate the sea levels so the sea water doesn't enter the site? Because uh, I see the distance of the site so close to the coastline. Okay. We already uh, researched about the sea level around the site. Actually, the area is, uh, they have the uh, the length of the sea level that uh, not too uh, high when it comes to full moons. So uh, we already think about the height of uh, the building. And also we have a solution for the gutter around the, uh, the cabin unit. So it will help uh, if the sea level increase to the area. Okay, thank you, Mr. Riri. We also got questions from Andreas Christian, how to make the prefab building more meaningful in the context of the process for community? Because I think sometimes people who see short time of construction usually don't appreciate the result. It's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Mr. Budi will guide us to make the answer. <laughs> uh, okay. Meaningful, that means it's uh, very site specific in the way that we, if we can use uh, something similar to what they can do. Yeah. For example, very basic system or very basic wood. Yeah, actually, I wonder that this uh, a kind of joint system is actually from ancestor, from very old one, and maybe the generation, the new generation, is forgot to do it. So this time is uh, a kind of uh, learning time for the new generation that this kind of joinery system of all systems is maybe it's important again. So, so I think a long time ago, after, after the modernism, we, we never thinking about the localism, the smartness of, of indigenous uh, system. Now, after the pandemic, we have to stop a while and thinking more. I think now we understand that the system is very sophisticated in the way that, so if we can reusing it, 
then it's become a meaningful again. So I think is that is my answer. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr. Woody. <laughs> I think it's all about the mindset because uh, the traditional building using the prefab method for their building, uh, they, their vernacular uh, way of building. So uh, I think we should think again about how they can build the, their home, their building. So uh, I think that's what's the meaning for uh, the building itself. That's about only the definition of the prefab, but it's about how to how to uh, generous about how to um, uh, make more architectural building. So, yeah, please, Takeru. Yes. Mm. It's very difficult question, but uh, I think uh, prefab is the not mean prefab is uh, is not the meaning of temporary. Prefab can be temp permanent, so up to the system. So. This is a very important theme of this competition. So, gambatte kudasai, please. Thank you, Mr. Takeru. Welcome. The next question uh, comes from Adisti. Uh, she said that regarding from Mr. Budi Pradono said earlier that communities has the great impact to build a good building. The question is how much it is affected about how communities changing in this pandemic term and as architect, how's your opinion about this issue? Hmm. I think the issue is now is uh, because during the last three months, we almost stopped any activities. So we have to rethink, everyone can have to rethink about anything about our lives, about the construction system. So because of the pandemic, so some project postponed. And I think it's a, it's a challenge for local people because it's, a, it's another opportunity to have a new project in the future. So, so I think the involvement of communities creating a new opportunity to many people. So it's a kind of, we, I call it domino effect, that if we think small thing that everybody can involve, like empowering people, like maybe some village, village can make only roof, some village can make a system, some village can, make another floor yeah some felix can create a, a new food yeah i think i, I think that is uh, important so it's uh, creating new opportunities thank you mr pradono thank you and Last but not least, we also have questions from Karisma Maulia also uh, about the prefab construction. How about issue regarding the transportation of the material to the construction site? Maybe about the cost, the transportation cost, or maybe the traffic issue? 
Mm. Okay, uh, maybe I will answer first. Uh, in my experience in Lombok, uh, the construction technique that we use, uh, we can use the like assembling method, not uh, to use the one unit building uh, and bring bring it to the site because uh, the location or the uh, road in Indonesia uh, is uh, yeah, it's more uh, difficult to bring the only uh, the one full unit of the building and then uh, we need to make uh, some uh, cutting materials by pieces and bring them to the site and uh, assembling at the site after that because due the location consideration that I uh, experience in, in Lombok. Yeah, I think uh, I also had a similar experience with really while I, I did the project in Lombok in the mountain when we we use containers and it's uh, it's very difficult so in the way that we have to break down dismantle this building into piece and reconstruct it on the top of the mountain so i think it's a uh, how to make a system of modular system that they can avoid to bring the the big uh, things but uh, in, instead of that, we have to use uh, bring the piece of piece and and combine it into one building. Thank you. Thank you. What about Mr. Takeru? Um, yes, yeah, same as uh, Lady and Dodi. Uh, so. Each specific site has a, each material. So you should bring up a special material in this site. So, and also efficiency to transport uh, is very important. So that's why really also body also me also try to uh, use a small, small material. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we also got another question. Uh, I guess this is for the competition from Severus Andrew. Can you suggest a few potential book? Sorry. Uh, we've got another question from Severus Andrew. Mm -hmm. He has, uh, can you suggest a few potential Lombok? Oh, <laughs> ask Mr. Google. <laughs> <laughs> no answer. Yeah. We also got questions from Francis Surja Seputra. Uh, any ideas how to waterproof the glamping concept using local materials? Maybe I think it's a 
part of uh, part of the research for this competition. <laughs> Yeah. And then um, questions was from Ramaputra addressed to Mr. Pradono regarding the cost of the project in East Indonesia such as Atambua and Lombok. Is the use of solar panel an appropriate solution? Yeah, I think that is an appropriate solution. I think it's very good. Solar panel. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it looks like we have covered all of the questions. So Mr. Riri, Mr. Takeru, and Mr. Pradono, is there anything else you wanted to cover before a wrap up? Okay. Um, thank you everyone. Uh, before a wrap up, we also have three participants' names who has first asked questions. Congratulations to Edward, Gasani Amalina, and Damayanto. You will get t-shirt as a door prize. We will contact you by email. And also for the e-certificate, please kindly fill the form and we will send the e-certificate e by email. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, seems like Times also has spared us. On behalf of PPA Institute, thank you to our three speakers, Mr. Riri, Mr. Takeru, and Mr. Pradono, and all participants for joining us today. We hope you found this education valuable in designing small and prefab architecture, and we will see you again next time. Good afternoon. Photo. Oh. Before that, um, please kindly turn on your video. We want to take a picture. Okay. This way. To all participants, please kindly turn on your video to take a pictures together. Okay, ready, big one. Thanks, and um, big two. Okay, finish. Okay, thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Thank you, Mas Budi, Ageru. Thank you, Riri. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Francisca. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.